Hey everyone, it's The Diplomat coming to you from the USA. And we're on part 18 of the Chris Watts Discovery read-through. We just finished Discovery page 346. Uh, we went through both John and Troy's interviews along with handwritten notes. And next we are going to go through the interviews uh, with Luke, Chris's boss, as well as Melissa who was on site that day uh, with them. So on page uh, 347, we just have a, um, actual. this is uh, the 1A cover sheet uh, from Jones regarding the cell phone images that he took from Troy. So on to page 348, we have the FBI interview with Luke. Uh, this is date of entry, August 21st, 2018. Luke was interviewed at his place of employment, Anadarko Petroleum Corporation, 501 North Division Boulevard, Platteville, Colorado. Agent Greg Zentner, Colorado Bureau of Investigation, was also present during the course of the interview. After being advised of the identities of the interviewing agents and the nature of the interview, Luke provided the following information. Luke is Christopher Watts' direct supervisor, and he has been Watts' supervisor since approximately April 2016. Watts is a field coordinator, so he is Luke's go-to, in quotes, person when maintenance issues arise. Luke tries to get into the oil field as much as possible, and he tends to split his time at approximately 60% in the field and 40% in the Anadarko office. Luke is essentially the foreman for Anadarko sites spanning between U.S. Highway 85, Weld County Road 22, Survey Ranch, and Denver International Airport. Luke described Watts as quiet and a great employee. Watts has never had any issues about showing up to work or being on time. Watts' children have had some health issues, but Watts has always called Luke to advise him if he needed to take time off to tend to his children. Watts is an introvert, and he does not like attention. He does not get excited, but since the disappearance of Watts' family, he has appeared on edge, in quotes, and flustered. Watts told Luke that he had nothing to hide, in quotes, and he had moved his work truck away from his house in order to protect Anna Darko from any media attention. Luke does not believe Watts has any family in Colorado, and Luke is not familiar with any Watts friends. Luke believes Watts moved to Colorado because he and Shanann visited on vacation and liked the state. Luke is not aware of any with grievances against Watts or his family. Luke has no reason to believe anyone would jeopardize the safety of Watts' family. Watts had scheduled time off from July 31st through August 7th, 2018 in approximately June 2018. Watts returned to work on August 8th and 9th and he took August 10th off. Watts is currently working Monday through Friday shifts, which he has worked for approximately the past year. A typical shift begins at approximately 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. and ends at 3 or 3.30 p.m. An employee shift begins when the employee arrives at either the office or the work site, and this is largely based on an honor system. Employees input time information into an online time card. Watts does not work weekends. Watts does not generally discuss his personal life to include his wife with Luke, and he generally does not talk much. Luke and Watts do not associate with each other outside work. Luke considers an employee's personal life to be personal as long as it does not affect work performance. Luke was aware that Watts was having some marital issues, but he was not aware of specific details. Luke last physically saw Watts on or about Thursday, August 9, 2018. After Watts' family was reported missing, Watts told Luke that he may be staying with a friend in the event Luke saw unusual activity on his work truck's geotab monitoring. Luke explained that Watts was aware that his truck had his GPS monitoring that was tracked by Anna Darko. Work trucks can be used for minor deviation to and from work, and Watts told Luke that he would not be staying too far from his home address. Luke explained that Geotab pulls location data approximately every 5 to 100 seconds. Geotab documents other information such as when the vehicle is turned on or off. Anna Darko switched to Geotab from another provider in approximately May or June 2018. On Monday, August 13, 2018, Watts went directly from his home to Survey Ranch 319 with follow-up work at Union Pacific Railroad Company, UPRC, 1029. Luke is not sure when Watts actually arrived at Survey 319. Luke generally arrives at the Anadarko office around 6 or 6.30 a.m. 
and he saw Chad and Melissa at the office at approximately 6.30 a.m. on Monday. Luke believes that Watts posted on GroupMe that he was at Survey 319. Maintenance at Survey 319 and UPRC 1029 on Monday the 13th was basic routine stuff, in quotes. Watts and the other operators were troubleshooting a line at Survey 319 which should be easily accomplished. Operators would have a checklist to follow that would likely take a couple of hours to complete. This would involve isolating the problematic line in order to repair it. Survey 319 and UPRC 1029 are not monitored by video or any other method of access control. Watts left the batteries in the early afternoon. Watts called Luke and told him something to the effect of, in quotes, I can't get hold of Shanann. She's not home, and she should be there. Luke heard from Watts via telephone again later Monday. Luke's superintendent had asked Luke how Watts was doing, and Luke requested an update from Watts. Watts explained that his wife's wallet, purse, keys, and identification card were at his house. Watts had gone to his neighbor's house and asked to review the neighbor's security camera. Watts noted that he had not seen any activity except when he got into his work truck in the morning and departed for work. Watts had discussed returning to work with Luke. Luke had, had devised a potential plan that would have involved Watts shadowing Luke, but that plan was ultimately denied by Luke's supervisor, Tony. Luke did not recall Watts saying anything odd following the disappearance of his family. Watts appeared to be flustered during phone conversations with Luke following the disappearances. Luke provided verbal consent for interviewing agents to review and record the content of text messages sent between Luke and Watts. These messages are maintained on a disk in 1A envelope associated with this document. Okay, now on 352, we have Jones's handwritten notes from his interview with Luke on August 15th. It says, Luke, Supervisor, 2016, April 2016. Great employee, quiet, never issues, showing up early, late. Kids sick, taking time to call. 5-2 uh, um, schedule, Monday through Friday, for about last year. Doesn't work weekends. Field coordinator, go to. Uh, Luke tries to get in field 60 to 40%. Doesn't discuss personal life. Doesn't talk. Doesn't talk about wife. Don't hang out. Told Luke about issues. Uh, quotes, might be staying with friend. Aware vehicle had geotab. Wouldn't be f far from home. Truck for limited personal errands. Went straight to field. Survey ranch. Survey... Uh, Something federal, survey federal 1029, UPRC 319, uh, Union Pacific Railroad, CR 22 North, DIA South, uh, something 85, survey and prospect. Uh, foreman starts 6, 6.30 a.m. to 3.30 or 3. Clock starts parking lot of office location. Honor system, online time card. Not sure actual arrival. Chad and Melissa in 6.30ish at office on Monday. Kristen check into office. Uh, group me said at site from Chris. Didn't elaborate. Personal life stays personal. Not affecting performance. Doesn't think family in state. Not sure about friends. Came to Colorado for vacation. Really liked. Didn't see Monday. Last saw previous Thursday. Scheduled PTO in June for July 31st to August 7th. Returned 8-9. Took off 10th. Next page. Geotab pulls every 5 seconds to 100 seconds. Engine on, off. Switch to Geotab May, June. 1029 and, and 319 not monitored. Key card video. Um, meaning they're not monitored by those things. On survey all Monday until home. Called and told going home. Can't get hold of wife. Not home. She should be there on Monday. Heard back Monday night. Superintendent called, text, texted Chris asking for update. ID, wallet, purse, keys there. Introvert, doesn't like ath authority. I don't know what that says, but it says doesn't get excited. On edge, on edge, flustered, nothing to hide in quotes. Moved company pickup away from media. Uh, went to look at neighbor's camera, got in work pickup and left. No activity on camera. She, and then nothing. Reviewed at Neighbors, Monday, 
basic routine stuff in quotes trouble shot line leak survey site should be able to do fairly easy checklist before starting took a couple hours typical isolate line and pressure up no bad blood with anyone mid-year okay quiet but gotta speak up no fears for wife no safety concerns for kids wants to get back to work would have shadowed but trumped by tony didn't say anything odd flustered on phone reached out to in-laws verbal consent text since May 2018. We obviously know why he wanted to get back to work. Because he needed to get back to that site. It's got to be why. Okay, now we have uh, just another uh, physical 1A, 1C cover sheet. This is regarding uh, the cell phone images um, from uh, Jones, and I assume those uh, images are elsewhere. That's of the text messages with those folks and Watts. Okay, on page 356, we have a, another FBI interview. This time is with Melissa, who was on site that day, uh, also an Anadarko employee. August 21st, 2018 is date of entry. Melissa was interviewed via telephone. After being advised of the identity of the interviewing agent and the nature of the interview, Melissa provided the following information. Melissa began employment with Dar Anna Darko as an operator in approximately May 2018. She met Christopher Watts toward the end of June 2018, and she is on the same Monday through Friday shift as Watts. She generally sees Watts about once a week during the course of her training in the oil field and at the office. Melissa is aware that Watts is married with kids. She knew that Watts' wife was recently out of town. Watts talked about his daughter with Melissa on occasion, and his daughter seemed to be, quote-unquote, his world. Melissa described Watts as very knowledgeable, hardworking, and easygoing. She never observed him complaining about family, home life, or other matters, and she observed him to joke a lot. Watts' nickname were the Silver Fox, due to his appearance, and, quote-unquote, the Rain Man, due to his extensive work knowledge. The Silver Fox and the Rain Man. Melissa was not aware of any issues or troubles with Watts' family. She was not aware of any enemies, concerns or fears about associates, family members, friends, or other individuals. On Monday, August 13, 2018, Melissa was assigned to work on Survey 319 with Watts and Chad. Melissa and Chad arrived at the Anadarko office at approximately 6 a.m., and they left the office around 7.45 or 8 a.m. Chad and Melissa drove together, but in their own work trucks. They stopped along the way at the quote-unquote Bat Cave to try to find some parts for work, but were unable to locate the necessary items. Melissa believes that she and Chad arrived at Survey 319 at approximately 8.25 a.m., but she referred Ryder to the GPS data on her work truck for an actual timeline. Watts was already at the site when Melissa and Chad arrived and she was not sure how long Watts had been on site. Watts had a shovel, and he was digging a small hole near an oil, oil tank. Melissa believes the hole was approximately a foot wide and six to eight inches deep. If you have any more information on this hole that he was digging, I'd appreciate that um, if you commented. All right, page 356. This was Melissa's first time at Survey 319, so she was not aware of anything strange or unusual at the site. Survey 319 contains two tanks, a pit, and a separator. Watts greeted everyone and explained what was going on with the equipment. Melissa did not notice anything odd about his behavior. He did not appear tired or different than normal. Watts told Melissa that he went to Colorado Rockies game on Saturday, August 11, 2018, and he told her about a walk-off home run. Watts did not describe his seats, who he was with, or any additional details. It was an evening game, and he had hired a babysitter to watch his daughters. Watts did not say much else beyond these discussions. After some time at Survey 319, Watts, Melissa, Troy, and Chad departed and went to a second site. At some point while at the second site, Watts sent to, went to a truck to take a call. He did not explain the concept of, of the call to Melissa. Melissa observed that the bed of Watts' pickup truck was full of equipment, but she did not observe the interior of the cab. 
Melissa was provided writer's contact information, and she was asked to call should she recall additional information. On August 16, 2018, Ryder received a follow-up call from Melissa. Melissa never observed Watts travel directly from his house to the oil field. She often encountered, encountered him at the office in the morning prior to leaving for sites. She did not recall him sending out a message via GroupMe that he was at Survey 319, and she believes he usually sends a message to the group when he's in the field. Troy had told her Watts had a new pair of boots that he had been wearing. Melissa had not seen this new pair of boots. On Monday, August 13, 2018, Watts was wearing an older pair of boots with his pants tucked in. Melissa had observed that Watts normally wears his pants over his boots. Melissa asked Watts about this, and he replied that he was worried about snakes and legless lizards. Melissa did not believe Watts was sweaty or complaining about the heat. Watts was sociable Monday. He spoke about the Rockies game, and he joked with Troy. Page 357. During the course of repairing the equipment, Watts released the pressure release valves, PRV, which caused some oil to spit out. Melissa had observed Watts to be meticulous with cleanliness, but on this occasion he did not clean the spill. Melissa and Chad departed to a second site while Watts was still at Survey 319. Later in the day, Melissa went back to Survey 319 to evaluate the equipment as repairs had not been fully completed. She noticed that the PRV had not been wiped down, which she thought was unusual given Watts' propensity to cl clean messes and spills. Melissa wanted Ryder to be aware that she and Chad had returned to Survey 319 again on Tuesday, August 14, 2018, at approximately 7.30 or 8 a.m. in order to check on the equipment. So pretty interesting things in there with some of the oddities, you know, not things that would lead anyone to believe Chris was up to what he was up to, but certainly um, after there was the disappearance and all those kinds of things, there were things that some of these people noticed that were odd and different. Okay, now we have... The handwritten notes of Jones from his interview with Melissa on August 15th. Uh, Melissa, no outside conversations. Known Chris, couple months, end of June. Operator, started in May with Anna Darko. 5-2, uh, I can work. Bounce around, just generally work. Uh, weekly encounters with Watts. Saturday's game at Coors Field saw a walk-off home run didn't say who with didn't say anything about seats no other detailed hired sitter evening game survey 319 had kids wife out of town didn't notice odd very knowledgeable hard worker never complains easygoing joking silver fox and rain man nicknames never angry no complaints about family home life etc girls his world with chad on monday arrived at office 604 a.m Left office at 7.45 to 8 a.m., stopped at Bat Cave, arrived at site around 8.24 a.m. Tried to find, but didn't. Trying to find things at the Bat Cave, I guess, but didn't. Chris cut Chris out by self. No indication of time out. Shoveling ar out around tank. Um, foot in depth. Foot around foot wide, 6.8 inches, 6 to 8 inches. First time at sight. Nothing strange around. Two tanks, pit, separator. Not sure about fracking. Not tired. Said hi to everyone. Explained what was going on. Didn't say anything. Went to second sight. Arrived at same time. In separate trucks. Didn't see in cab. Bed full. No odd. Nothing odd at second sight. Moved to truck to take call. Didn't say what about. No indication about troubles at home. Not aware of enemies. No fears of concern talked about girls uh, melissa doesn't know chris to ever go straight to the field first seen him go straight to the field that's a very good insightful observation by melissa uh, no message monday usually usually stays in field or says in, in the field in group me troy had said as got he's got new boots but not wearing them Scared about snakes, legless lizards, normally pants over boots, Monday pants tucked into boots, 
didn't notice sweat heat hasn't seen in new boots still sociable talked about rockies game joking with troy release prus sp spot oil spat oil usually meticulous about cleanliness could see where spill later went to second site uh Watch truck still there. Went back to Servi 319 PRU. Not wiped it down. Unusual. So that's where we're going to end this part with the interview of Luke and Melissa. And next time we will be getting into the uh, FBI interviews with Amanda and Nick. If you recall, uh, Nick and Amanda are the friends uh, whose house uh, Chris stayed at uh, during those couple days. So that will certainly be interesting so i really thank you for being here and listening and um this is being done in the loving memory of shanann bella celeste and nico and uh the rusek family i hope god blesses you this is the diplomat i hope you have a great day